Story continued from Therizinosaurus episode. Deep in the lowlands of prehistoric Mongolia, the eerie silent forests are shrouded in the morning mists. However, down by the river deltas, the air is beginning to clear from the rising sun, revealing one of the area's largest inhabitants. Dinochirus is a massive ornithomimosaur. Twelve meters long and over six tons, these giants are gentle herbivores and have adapted specialized traits to make use of their water-covered homes. Though they are capable of feeding on a wide range of plants, their favorite are those that grow in fresh water. Their long, almost duck-like bills are excellent for skimming through the shallow water. To aid them, they have long, powerful arms with three massive hooked claws. Though they are rather blunt, they are perfect for dredging up mounds of submerged plants so that they can consume them with ease. While many small rivers and creeks will dry out during the dry season, the main rivers remain full year-round, meaning the Dinochirists almost always have plenty to feed on. They spend most of their days wading through the shallow waters or browsing from trees on the edges of rivers. They have such a relaxed nature that many other species of dinosaur prefer to be around them, and since the Dinochirus are so tall, they can see predators from much greater ranges. They are not immune from danger, however. When on solid land, they are vulnerable to apex predators, like Tarbosaurus. Though they are often seen together in groups, they are not herd animals, more like a loose community that live within close proximity of each other. As the sun continues to rise, several of these gentle giants are feeding close to the delta's edges, near the misty forest. As they forage, something deep within the forest is on the move. The first sign comes in the form of a distant, yet terrifying scream. The shrill, piercing screech tears through the trees and hits the ears of the Dinochirus. All turn their heads in the sound's direction and freeze. The scream dies down as suddenly as it appeared, but the large herbivores remain still. The sound's source is far away, and vaguely similar to that of a Therizinosaurus, another large herbivore. But something about it was off, and that is why the Dinochirus have a difficult time returning to feeding, uncertain why a Therizinosaur would make such a cry, and hoping it didn't end up coming their way. An hour passed, with the forest remaining eerily quiet, and the Dinochirus had steadily moved along their way. It was then the silence was broken when a small herd of Tarkia, medium-sized ankylosaurs, came running out of the forest as fast as their legs could carry them. Behind them came a series of furious barks and the sound of claws cutting through wood. As the last of the Tarkia made it out of the forest, a massive form burst through the tree line, crying out in rage. Standing five meters tall, weighing six tons, is a massive Therizinosaurus, bearing its intimidating 1.5 meter claws. During their mating season, male Therizinosaurus bodies get pumped full of testosterone so that they can look big and impressive to females, a side effect being that they become very aggressive. However, this one is unusually agitated. Perhaps in his old age, his body is not responding properly to the increased hormone levels. It screeches at the fleeing Tarkia, but then spots one of the Dinochiras wading close to the shore. Now with a new target to let his anger out on, the large male Therizinosaurus stomps towards the water's edge. The female Dinochiras turns and moves to the slightly deeper water. Therizinosaurus don't do well in water and hate getting their feathers wet, but this doesn't deter the enraged male, who charges in and despite the water getting up to his stomach, continues. The female is forced to turn around and face her pursuer. She lets out a low bellow to try and intimidate the advancing threat, but the Therizinosaurus growls back, and now having closed the gap between them, swings his right hand, the long claws going in a wide arc. The Dinochirus ducks under the swipe, partially submerging herself, but then the Thero's left arm swings low, slashing across her face. Two of the three claws cut into her, 
leaving long slashes that begin to weep blood. The angry male lifts his right arm to bring it down on the victim, but the Dinocaris raises her head and bites down on the wrist. Though she stopped herself getting cut again, her jaws are weak, and the Therizinosaurus lowers his head and bites down on the Dinocaris' neck, cutting through the feathers down into the skin. He then lifts the female's body up and slams her into the water, pinning her on her side with his foot. As the female struggles to get up, the Therizinosaurus lets go with his jaws and raises his left arm to impale the struggling Dinocaris. Suddenly, great pain hits the male in his left thigh. Turning, he sees a second Dinocaris has come up from behind him and sunk the claws on his hands into the Therizinosaurus's leg. The claws may have been blunt, but there was plenty of strength behind them, and they cut deep into the attacker's flesh. The second Dinocaris pulled the Therizinosaurus back, dragging him through the mud and water. The angry male swung his claws at the second Dinocaris, but couldn't reach. The pinned female got to her feet and went on to the attack, but the Therizinosaurus' massive claws kept her at a distance. Then, a third, massive female Dinocaris came charging in, bellowing loudly. She crashed through the shallow water and slammed her whole body into the Therizinosaurus's side, propelling it across the water before it fell into the mud, flipping over before coming to a halt. The dazed male struggled to his feet and roared at the trio that stood before him. The Dinocaris stood shoulder to shoulder and together let out a thundering roar of defiance. Intimidated, wounded, and his testosterone failing him, the beaten male Therizinosaurus turned and pulled himself back onto dry land and limped into the forest. The Dinocaris continued to call after him. Their blood had been spilt this day, and now the whole delta would know it. Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down another dinosaur that was requested by a viewer. Dinochirus. Dinochirus was first discovered in Mongolia in 1965, the only complete remains being the massive arms. It was a mystery what the rest of the animal looked like for almost 50 years, until more remains were located and identified in the early 2010s. Almost the entire skeleton is now known, and it is one of the most unique dinosaurs to have ever existed. Living 70 million years ago, Dinocaris was the largest ornithomimosaur, reaching lengths of 11.5 meters, stood 4.4 meters tall, and weighed around 6.5 tons. The environment it lived in was that of a seasonal floodplains, similar to a swampy delta, and this helps to explain many of its physical traits. The head was over a meter long, with the snout being similar to that of modern ducks. The jaws were toothless and turned downward, so it was well adapted to feeding on water plants. Although it didn't have a strong bite, the depth of the lower jaw indicated a large tongue, meaning that it may have fed by sucking in food at the bottom of freshwater bodies. The neck was long, but more S-shaped than other ornithopods to bear its large skull. The arms of Dinocaris are 2.4 meters long, some of the longest of all dinosaurs, and tipped with three 19 centimeter curved claws. These arms had powerful muscles that scientists believe were used to dredge mass amounts of water plants up to its mouth. Though the claws were blunt, they were hooked and may have been effective weapons. After all, the name Dinocaris means terrible claw. Stomach contents found over 1,000 gastroliths or stomach stones in one of the individuals, which would have been swallowed in order to help grind up the vast amounts of vegetation it ate. Fish scales and fish vertebra were also found, so Dinocaris was omnivorous, perhaps eating small animals and fish on occasion. However, it seems to mostly be specialised for eating water plants, and of all ornithopods, is described as the most specialized of its genus. Along its back, it had increasingly tall vertebra, which created a hump or sail above the hips. Whether this was used for display, fat storage, or an adaptation for gigantothermy is not known. 
The tail ended with fused vertebra. This is seen in other species that have fan-like feathers on the tips of their tails, and Dinochirus is often depicted with mass amounts of feathers all over its body. The legs were shorter than its close relatives, and along with its size, would have been quite slow. Its feet were also broader to carry its weight, and may have helped it not sink in muddy surfaces. As I said earlier, it's one of the most unique dinosaurs to have ever existed. A swamp-loving giant that evolved from a family known for its speed and agility. Using its massive arms and claws to rip out mounds of water plants, to scoop them into its wide mouth. I wonder if it slept in the water, semi-submerged, or went on to land to dry out. Was it the only large animal in the area that adapted to its semi-aquatic way of life? And how did it interact with other large herbivores in its area? So many questions. Dinochira shows how varied dinosaurs really were, and that they adapted to all forms of environmental niches, and thrived in all of them during their long reign. But what do you think of Dinochirus? Do you remember reading about a mysterious set of massive arm bones that no one knew the origin of back in the day? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to break down in a future episode, and until then, thank you for watching.